How do you deal with a situation that you feel helpless to change? Sometimes things happen that cut straight to the heart and seem impossible and unbearable. We can get overwhelmed and lose our ability to lead the people we need to help. This is where a relationship coach can be a game changer. In this session, you're gonna learn a four-step process that will give you purpose and power in facing any tough situation. Jules is an incredibly creative, strong, and loving man facing a family dilemma he doesn't know how to change. In the space of just 25 minutes of coaching, you're gonna see a complete shift in his abilities. We're on site at the Pacia Center for Strategic Intervention, where Mark and Magalie Pacia are giving an SI boot camp training. Magalie's just asked for a volunteer to do a live coaching session. Anybody here have a situation that they find themselves in every day or every week or once a month where they feel anxious and they'd like to overcome that? Yes. Uh, it's actually related to something that happened about 10, 15 this morning, which is I am a granddad for the first time. Congratulations. And as great as that is, <laughs> the, basically the circumstances are really odd. I had no idea that this daughter ever wanted to be pregnant. She told me she was pregnant really, really late. It's with, she, and she wants to be a single mom, and it's with a man who is... Um, has a lot of post, post-traumatic stress, is of a totally different culture, and he's living part-time in our home, and man, when I'm at home sometimes, and this man is here, um, uh, we get along superficially, but inside, I, I don't know how to act. I don't know how to, right. the, the act of being, a, I sink inside, because, the, uh, because of fathership. I'm like, you know, I question the decisions, and. And everyone says, no, you can't work with them because he's got post-traumatic stress. And so I don't work with them, but still we're all kind of nice to him. Okay, so hopefully this strategy will be very helpful for you because what I really liked about what you said is that you focused on your own state and how you're dealing with it. So that's exactly what this is for. Imagine if you can how you would feel if your daughter had just told you that she was pregnant and planning to raise the baby by herself. It's not easy, right? So we can appreciate the force of Jules's reaction. In these kinds of situations, we develop a tendency to frustration and blame. But Magley's about to take a very powerful position in relation to Jules. Her attitude can be expressed as, everything you tell me is welcome and useful. That means Jules can continue to express himself and they will bring his emotions and experiences in line with his purpose. Let's see how this conversation shifts. I have uh, two daughters. This daughter lives at home uh-huh. and she is 32 and she's finally found a career for herself. Good. Uh, it's going to take a while to get there. Yeah. She wants to work with uh, chronic homeless people, which is wonderful. Okay. And everybody in the family <laughs> knew that she never wanted to have kids. Ever. It shows you how much I knew her, <laughs> which was an issue because when she told me, which was really late in her process, it was like two months ago, uh-huh. um, it, it was like just, you know, I was dry, dropping her off at school and, uh-huh. and it was like, oh, well, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> and, and she got out and I left crying uh-huh. because it's like, I, I didn't know her. How could I not know her, you know? And then... Um, she just chose as the father, I just, you know, I don't understand it. I'm like, and so I beat myself up as being right. a father for not being proactive and trying to have, you know, values or something. And, and, and by the way, this man who is the father, we all like. A client will often express a life predicament as an impossible situation, something that shouldn't be happening. And we have to admit that at one level, the coach has no power to fix that situation. And, on another level, she absolutely can. As Magali holds a space for Jules, he's able to clarify his feelings and discover his own resources. You all like him? We love this guy. And he lives in your home. Part-time. 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 He's he's, uh, Athabascan, from the Athabascan tribe Mm -hmm. in Alaska. And uh, he has a lot of post-traumatic stress and trauma. He's been in jail. He's, uh, he has, he's got great values. Um, and I, I personally, 
So your family seems to be incredibly loving and like your daughter wants to work with the chronically oh, yeah. homeless. Yeah. So there's a lot yeah. of commonality there. There is. There and is. this man, you spoke of his values. So tell me about those values too. Well, his, he's trying to be open. He's trying to talk with us. According to my daughter, whose name uh, is Julia, uh, this has been very good for him because he's finally been able to sit down and have a meal with us. Yeah. But when he first came here, which is about a year ago, um, he couldn't even, he would be like in the bedroom and he'd be looking out the windows and like, you know, is someone after me? Yeah. Or he would jump over the fence in the backyard because he's, when he was in jail, he, I, you know, the amount of, there was trauma. the amount of trauma that has yeah. happened to him and other people. He, in order to get out of violent situations, he would strike a guard when he heard that he might be killed and then put into wow. solitary confinement wow. for six months. Wow. And I just can't imagine that. Yeah. And you know, so here he's the father of my grand, you know, granddaughter. Yeah. And um, boy, it just, uh, I just sometimes- I'm, I, Life surprises yeah, us, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, We don't stuck. expect who's yeah. gonna become our family. Yeah, yeah. When Magali says this, we don't expect who'll become part of our family, She's redefining the situation in terms of Jules' own values, his values of inclusion, creativity, and service. He instantly sees that, and now his purpose is clear, how to include the child's father in the family as a son-in-law. We've gone from it's impossible to it's difficult. Now Magalie's gonna understand specifically how Jules experiences his thoughts and emotions in the situation. What happens to me is when I'm with this man at times and he's asked me sometimes near the tears this one time he says you know just just work with me mm -hmm. work with That's me a little oh yeah i'll probably okay. need <laughs> okay. uh yeah. work he with says, me work, with, work me. with me be patient with me but my daughter doesn't want me to work with him okay. i don't have the skills to work with someone with this much trauma but you have a huge heart and this ability to be a friend yes i do but even being a friend is 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 difficult. Yes. You know, we had a, 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 a dinner out during Labor Day and he actually joined us Good. for a little bit of time. Good. And it was delightful. Yeah. And, yeah. and at the end, it was just him and me and he was starting to share with me. I mean, you know, he has two other kids and two other relationships. And currently, two other relationships. Currently, yeah. And they don't want anything to do with him. I mean, he's from a whole different culture. So he, like in the culture, you have more than one wife? Is that what you mean? No, like he, he's currently he, in has, he has two other children from two separate women who do not live. Who, okay, who are not in relationship with him right now. No. Okay, okay, no, I was just making yes, sure. You no, know. They're, they're far away. They don't, <laughs> okay, okay. They, they don't want anything to do with him. Okay, okay. Um, well, that's better than having three wives. That's better than having three wives. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I was complicating it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay. So and, they and, don't. At, at the and end, where do those children live? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. He so they're not really in the picture. No. He offered okay. the information mm -hmm. to me once very gracefully. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I talked a little bit, but I have to be so careful <laughs> yes. because his sense of boundaries are very sharp. Yeah. And when it's time to stop because he's feeling nervous, it's time to stop. Right. And I, I just, I totally have to honor that. I don't know how to be his friend. Yeah. I don't know how, I don't know how. Yeah. I don't yeah. feel like I knew my daughter. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and this, this is powerful, this I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So let's say I don't know now in a, in a, in a way we can embrace. I, not only do I not know, but I don't know what it means to be a father in this instance. I really do not know. I know, yeah. I know you don't know, and I think this is, I think this is a really, really, I know it sounds weird, but this is a huge opportunity for you. Yeah. Because whenever, especially, how old are you? Uh, 61. 61. So yeah. at 61, to face something new mm -hmm. with, that you care so much about, it's got to be an opportunity. Oh, it is. Yeah. And I face new yeah. things all the time. I'm totally oh. starting over in my life. Oh, okay. Uh, so you like time. facing new things. Oh, yes. Okay, good, oh, yeah. good, good. That's I do good. experiments okay. all the time. Okay. But this okay. one... This one feels really to the heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When a client says, I don't know, 
some coaches get worried. They think that not knowing is bad, but not knowing can also be good, a sign of courage and an open mind. Magley sees that Jules is a kind of a free spirit, so she's seized on this moment to help him feel the power of not knowing. He recognizes this resource within himself and that he can be comfortable just figuring it out. So I want to look at just using this strategy first, just very kind of classically staying with the strategy, and then okay. we can see where we want to go from there. Okay. okay. Now it's actually time to use the four P strategy, which Magley developed to help clients navigate difficult situations. The four P stand for purpose, the reason why you want to engage in the situation and what you want out of it. There's a reason why Jules brought this up in coaching and we're gonna discover that reason. The second P is for posture. When you go into a situation that triggers you, it's important to plan how to actually manage your body, your emotions and your physiology in that situation. The third P is for presence. How are you going to show up and be present in the situation? And the fourth P is for picture. Some clients find it helpful to have a picture or an image to hold in their minds as they go into that situation. These four P's work together in a holistic way. Magali is going to start by finding an actual moment in the day or week when Jules is triggered by the son-in-law's presence. And we're going to apply the four P's starting with his purpose. Let's focus in on the time of day or week where you're going to see him and even do more emotions come in his presence or away from him? They come both, but often away from. Okay. I'm with him and then they kind of arise okay. with this, yeah. Okay, so when would you say they're the most intense? When like right <laughs> before you're gonna see him or? When you're sitting at a meal with him or you see your daughter with him? Probably afterwards. Afterwards, yeah. okay, great. Yeah. Okay, great. I've trained myself to be okay. polite. Okay, so the trigger is, it happens when you're around him and then afterwards you get the anxiety. Yes. Okay, Yeah. great. So what would be your deeper purpose for changing your emotional state about him? Mm, a deeper purpose. Yeah. So, like, a surface purpose would be, mm -hmm. I want to be a polite man. Yeah. Um, I want to honor my daughter's choice. Mm -hmm. But the deeper... I mean, actually, that could be a kind of deep purpose, too, to honor your daughter's choice. But what, what would come to you? Um, a deeper purpose for me would be to... It would express it as a purpose, but as something to do with, with discovering... Discovering a, a deep level of compassionate fatherhood Beautiful. that somehow can't some here I go with this not knowing again. Yeah. <laughs> somehow accepts and embraces this somehow. Yes. I hate to keep repeating that. <laughs> yes. With with grace or something. Uh, and and then also there's something about Okay, with grace and what? Grace and what would you like to bring in there? Mm. Tell me more about the state you want. Grace is a state. Grace is and actually usually out. kind of in and the unknown, out. right? Um, it would be great. What was that? Well, grace, the way I think of grace could be different than the way you do. I think of it as like grace happens to you and you don't really have a lot of control. It's like mm. you're given this gift of feeling union or feeling flow. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you said that. I feel the same. My next word was articulation. Articulation. I'd grace. love to have more a sense of grace expressed in articulation, how I express it, which would lead to, uh, that's not just with fatherhood, it's with being men. With being men, because these are things that happen to men and women but I happen to be a, a man, a man and in this man. lifetime. Yep. Yeah, and that part, that and part you have two drives daughters, me crazy. Right? You don't yes. have a son. I have two okay. daughters. Okay. Yeah. This one other emotion I have is I have never been able to tell my daughter, are you fucking kidding me? Good are you thing. kidding me? A good thing you haven't told her that. Good thing. <laughs> Uh, 
And, and I've never told this man, and I know it's a good thing that I haven't told him because yeah. he, there's no way he could process it. Yeah. It would send yeah. him back into whatever. Yeah. But it's like, you know, I, I putting myself in his place, and it's like, how, how dare you? And it doesn't even, at this point, it doesn't matter that it's my daughter. Right. But having sex and procreating another human in your condition right now to make three pisses the fuck out of me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a good thing I didn't tell him that. Good thing. Yeah. And, yeah. And I haven't even. So come you close have self control. Yes, I do. You have great self control. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starring that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. In and, this instance. And- when a coaching client develops trust for their coach they'll sometimes start to share thoughts and feelings that they wouldn't otherwise share with anyone. This is where a coach can say, yes, this is the perfect time to share your truth. As Jules gets very intense, Magali is a stabilizing influence, welcoming his self-expression and bringing it in line with his purpose. I'm just wondering, when you do, I'm sure you've attempted to see things from your daughter's perspective. Might this have been an accident? Um, well... I mean, we all know that happens. Well, my opinion is, is it probably was. She yeah. says that it wasn't. Okay. Well, she needs to, and it's important sometimes for a mother to feel for whatever reason I did choose to be a mother. Yeah. yeah. So much better than her telling everyone this pregnancy is an accident. I don't want it. Yeah. No, I can you get know. that. Yeah. yeah. From her point of view, for sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. That's a, a loving perspective. Yeah. Jules had been unable to express his frustration and indignation with his daughter. Now he understands why. He's been holding back his opinion in order to protect his daughter and her child. Now he understands that this is a loving perspective. Notice a shift that creates in him. The other thing that can be brought into purpose is love. So you love your daughter. Of course I love her immensely. I never not loved her. So with discovering compassionate fatherhood and accepts and embraces this with grace and expressed in articulation, being men together. The love for your daughter Mm -hmm. may be the force that allows you to enter that state. That's a beautiful connection. I can start to even feel it when I allow myself to feel it. Because then my voice changes. I'm presencing myself. And you know how much you love your daughter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Connecting that with that deep love. Yes. Changes. It gives the force you need Mm. for what you Mm. know you want as a purpose. As opposed to conflicting. Right. I've been looking at it as a conflict. Right. But this is a towards. This yeah, is what you want. This is a towards. It's how you want to feel when you see him, mm-hmm. after you see him, when mm-hmm. you think about them or him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. This is what it looks like when a client truly aligns with their deeper purpose. You see the difference? Magli will use Jules' own words for his purpose. His words are to discover compassionate fatherhood, express it with grace and articulation, and to be able to be men together. Magli will remind Jules of his own words to bring him in line with his own purpose. Now we move to the second P, posture. Let's imagine you've just seen him and you're feeling that stress. What Mm -hmm. happens physically? What happens in your body? Mm. Where do you feel that stress? Or your posture? So this is number two, posture. Um... Well, I feel it... Uh, I feel it uh, in my chest, okay. and I feel it. It's it's very inward into my torso. It it doesn't take the place of like specific hand motions or mm-hmm. something sure. like that. But sure, but in the chest, does it bring you a little bit? Oh yes, like yeah. there's a little a bit little of, out of straightness or something. Yeah, it's a little bit forward. Okay, okay. Um, I'm kind of yeah. It's kind of. And, and what happens in your face? Just think about, think about, you know, oh, well, you've just seen him. It's been awkward. Maybe you said the wrong thing. 
Is oh yeah, I have. Yes, I have tense. some tension here, okay. and I'm kind of recreating it in my mouth a little bit. Yeah, I know I do. Yeah. Okay. And and actually, with my arms, my arms are kind <laughs> of. They come in. Yeah. I, yeah. It, and not even remembering what I do. If I recreate it right now, this is what my body does. Okay, yeah. good. I'm doing yeah. it with you because I want to feel that. Yeah. To experience your purpose, you don't want to get stuck in purely mental thoughts and words. It's best to also feel your purpose in your body. That's why Magalie and Jules together are exploring the posture that Jules is experiencing and wants to experience when working with his family. Now we're going to do it sitting and then we're going to do it standing. Now, remembering your purpose, the deep love for your daughter, Mm -hmm. and discovering compassionate fatherhood, Mm -hmm. and accepting and embracing (coughs) this man with grace and the sense of both being men. Now, taking that purpose, say it internally to yourself. I know it's long, so you can shorten it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like deep Mm -hmm. love, compassionate acceptance, being men, grace and articulation. Taking that deeper Mm -hmm. in, I want you to repeat those words however they come to you now on the inside. On the inside, yeah. yeah. On the inside. Okay. Um, I do this with my hands sometimes too. Yeah. 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 (laughs) I go there. (laughs) I didn't even think of it. Um, Yeah. And then next, as you say those words inside, Noticing your posture and adjusting it to, to really express that deeper purpose. So now being in your body with the purpose. So what happens when you want to include this deep love? When you want to include acceptance, being men, grace, articulation? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. How does that feel in the body? And, and exaggerate it even. Let's stand up. <laughs> Let's stand up and, 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 and what do you need to have that? Do you need courage? Do you need trust? And how would that look in your body? Well, right away as you were talking or as I mm-hmm. began to uh, repeat it for myself and be in touch with, so let me do that now. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> making real my daughter, <laughs> Julia, and all that she is, and even all that this man is, and the, the possibility for him, um, of course my posture changes. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, it happened right away. I'm, yeah. I You're am, open. I'm more open, I'm more yeah. upright, kind of gracefully so. Um, and I also notice my, my voice is different. It's a little lower, and it's a little more resonant. Um, great, great. So yeah, great, yeah. perfect. Yes, so yes. let's just be in that body, even without the words. Now that body of deep love, mm. and acceptance, and articulation, mm. and the ability to be men mm. together. Mm. However, mm. that is in your body. And I think there, there. My guess is there's a strength that comes with that with going towards this. Oh yeah, very much so, very much so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if I were to, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. There's so, a, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, okay, yes. yes. And the word yes, the word yes is there. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> with Jules, we've gone from a family situation that felt impossible to difficult to now, yes, 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 this is happening. That's the power of alignment. Now that they've explored posture, Maglu will lead Jules through the third P, presence. So now the third part of this practice is knowing that you're present now. When you associate to your deeper purpose and you feel Mm -hmm. it in your body, you are now present. You're not worrying about her decision in the past, Mm -hmm. what he went through, how you're going to show up, Next Mm -hmm. week, you're not worrying about that. You're centering in yourself right now Mm -hmm. and what you're in control of. Mm -hmm. So just remembering that presence, that's all. So now we're Mm going to do all three. So deep purpose. Let's do it once in silence and once out loud. So deep purpose, you Mm -hmm. say your deep purposes. You can touch if you want, move your hands, Mm -hmm. whatever. 
And with as okay. It's in my way. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> You're fine. It's in my way. Yeah, it's in your way. It's like, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yes, got it. No. No, I thought you wanted to adjust the mic, but it's no, fine. no, no, no. Okay. No. So, um, so that deep purpose, feeling into mm -hmm. the deep emotions of purpose, and then feeling that in the body with the words. Out loud. You want to do it out loud mm -hmm. now? Yep. And remembering that this is a present experience. Mm -hmm. So the present experience of being, embodying the grace, grace and the love of a deeper sense of being a man and a father as of my purpose, standing being here in that purpose and presence. Now, does any picture come to you with this whole experience, any symbol or picture you can use to remind yourself of this? Mm. A symbol or a picture. Give me a second with that one. Yeah, of course. Um, Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I have a, a picture of his face when he's happy. Great. He has Great. black hair this long. Wow. wow. And he's beautiful looking. Yeah. And he has a wonderful heart. And you see that in his smile? Yeah, I see that in his smile. I do. I see him. Wow. I see him reaching. He's reaching for something. He doesn't know how. Yeah. He doesn't know how. Yeah. Yeah. And you can be there next to him in this acceptance. Yeah. yeah. I can be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's great. So we're not done, though. Oh, we're not done. Okay. We're not done. Sometimes when you're working with a client who's highly visual, we'll do a fourth P, which stands for picture. Magali asked Jules for a picture to remind him of his purpose. And the picture he came up with, surprisingly, was a picture of his son-in-law himself. I think you can see that Jules' powers of compassion have been fully restored. Now Magali is going to give Jules an assignment for the week. So what, I, what I'm hoping that you'll want to do is practice this actually three times a day for hmm. one minute. Just one minute. It can be with your meals, it can be, it's good to link it to something, like when you brush your teeth or when you go to bed at night. Mm -hmm. And for one minute, you just remember your purpose, your posture. You might help to stand up or you can do it sitting down. Okay. And that you're present now with this. And then that picture of him smiling. And what happens is if you practice this every day, mm -hmm. And also, right before you know you're going to see him, mm -hmm. mm. you're taking conscious mm. control of what has been an unconscious response. Beautiful. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. So for one week, yeah. I would just ask you to practice this for one week and see what effect that has. And if mm -hmm. it's helping, mm -hmm. then maybe continue to do it twice a day yeah. or just right before you see him. You will do this? I will do this. And will you write to me? I will write to you and I will okay. do this. And send me a picture of the baby? Yes, I will. Okay. Yes, I will. Yes, <laughs> thank I will. you. <laughs> All right. Wonderful, Jules. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I get a hug? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we just saw a powerful, positive man and devoted father struggling with an incredibly difficult family dilemma. Jules was frustrated and almost violently angry with how helpless he felt. These were powerful emotions that came from love, and Magli provided a stabilizing presence so that he could be true to his experience and then decide what he actually wanted to do. Through the power of Magli's 4P strategy, we saw him tap into his actual purpose, which was to discover compassionate fatherhood and express it with grace and articulation so that he and his son-in-law could be men together. As he aligned with his purpose, Jules became gentle, protective, 
and inclusive. He investigated how he could experience his purpose in his posture, the second P, and discovered how to stand in his purpose. And he found the presence he needed to guide his family to a peaceful and productive collaboration. Finally, when Magley asked him for a picture to help inspire and guide him, the picture was of his son-in-law himself. Jewel started off feeling frustrated, upset, and helpless. And yet, during the coaching, he discovered that everything he needed was within him already. With the help of a master coach, even this difficult situation could be completely transformed. The four Ps is one of the unique patient method coaching strategies that are taught in detail at SI Bootcamp and Advanced Relationship Coach Training. Thousands of our students are using this strategy to help their clients to become creative, resourceful, and courageous, even in situations that use them frighten them most. If you're interested in coaching, we're excited to share the session with you. Please share it with someone else who'd appreciate it as well. And we hope to be with you again soon.